Cool. So my name is Jay Kim, and uh, I'm the CTO of Apex Labs, which is a founding member of uh, the area. And we specialize in um, building a software product called Skylight, which is uh, an enterprise platform that's targeted towards uh, wearable devices. So from our experience, obviously AR is a very, very large field that can span across multiple form factors and different use cases and things like that. I'm going to just share with you our experiences of having been in the smart glasses and the wearable tech space and some of the unique challenges that we have uh, run into in our interactions with our customers and partners. Uh, so just keep that in mind as, as we're going through this. So based on our experience over the last four years or so, any new piece of technology that gets injected into the enterprise, whether or not it's a, a, a standard typical mobile type of a device, or something that's really pushing the envelope like smartwatches and glasses and things like that, more or less goes through a, a very similar type of uh, a process. And if it's a mobile device for starters, you're really going to have to make sure that there is an, an infrastructure and the process, as Pete was alluding to, that's, that's in place. Um, things like mobile device management. So, you know, how do you, how do you split basically and firewall the, if you're bringing a, your personal device, how do you firewall the, the difference between your personal apps, vice your work apps and other kinds of things like that? Um, how, what kind of network uh, devices do you actually let onto your, your wired and wireless infrastructure? Um, how do you authenticate into the device? So, a lot of these things really work into a theme where if you were to, let's take Google Glass for example, or any of the other smart glasses that are available today, you pick one up and you turn it on, right? And then you're, you're right into the launcher experience and at worst, you know, you're doing a, a five digit type of an unlock sequence. That's not good enough for the enterprise. You have to t pair it back to their standard existing IT processes. And, and in a lot of the, the times, this length, the sheer complexity and the length of this technology injection process is a major barrier to, to really scaling up the use cases and scaling up the business associated with augmented reality in the enterprise today, um, which is all the more reason why a lot of these factors would have to, to be considered when you're first choosing use cases uh, for introducing this kind of technology and augmented reality at the workplace. Um, Something that's unique to wearable devices, for example, uh, physical device security, because true mobile devices and wearable devices can walk off. What happens when uh, you got data within that, within that device that's actually very sensitive and it's a trade secret? So, you know, very different. And I know that I'm, I'm preaching to the choir for those of you in the enterprise sector, uh, but, you know, these are, these are things that are very, very important to the, the customers and barriers that have to be overcome. Uh, there's a significant training element, and I know that that's, uh, there's another session that's going on later on today uh, that specifically deals with training and the complexities they're in. Um, and then integration of support model. So you're not developing a single app and you're, develop you're, you're delivering that to the user. Rather, what you're doing is you're delivering a, a capability that you in turn have to sustain and support over a course of time. So what does that model look like? Um, and then, you know, again, also with wearable devices, how do you customize and personalize different kinds of uh, technology so that, you know, comfort and user experience is uh, placed ahead? A lot of the times the misnomer is that in the enterprise, um, fashion, comfort, style, user experience matters less. And that may be true, but I mean, we're, we're all humans at the end of the day. And we, we gravitate towards using technology at scale that that are the easiest and the most comfortable to use. And all of this, of course, uh, quoting Pete again, is to, to build a robust ecosystem of technology and devices within the enterprise. So I'm gonna introduce you kind of the, the two ARs, and this is by no means an industry standard type of a term, but if you look at AR as, you know, the, the A standing for assisted reality versus augmented reality, and again, this is within the wearable devices realm, so think about augmented reality as the, the AR that most of us know, the textbook holistic overlay um, devices, a lot like the video that, um, that was shown of HoloLens. And assisted reality is a notion involving things like Google Glass and things like watches and other kinds of, um, we'll call it wearable displays uh, that are really intended to give you um, bursts of micro interactions 
rather than something, a data that you are really consuming through a, a complex task and you're being guided through it all, assisted reality is small bits, contextually relevant data, and not overlaid, but still gives you either in the form of text, images, or some other kinds of uh, diagrams, something useful that you need in order for, in order for uh, the workforce to do the job. Of course, um, obviously most relevant in, in scenarios where users are working with their hands and hands-free interaction is of the utmost importance. Um, the, the key part is really that assisted reality today, based on our experience, has the all of the, the different kinds of infrastructure exists today. Uh, of course, it's you know, it's not a, a straightforward problem, but there are fewer barriers um, in introducing this technology into production environments, and that's another distinction that I really want to be able to make, is that it's, we, we at Apex and then lots of area members have done lots of different sandbox projects, meaning these are capabilities that were delivered with as self-contained systems, and systems that are not really touching production instances and production uh, IT systems and things like that. Taking that sandboxed environment and moving that into production is what really is at the, the top of the, the mind of everyone in the industry, and I know that I'm speaking for everyone here. Um, so from a hardware perspective and sensors, uh, you obviously don't need a, a device like a HoloLens, although it would be superbly nice to have, uh, in order for you to be able to do what, what I'm calling here assisted reality. Uh, so you can do this with, you know, different variants of heads-up display devices like Google Glass and the Recon Jet, Vuzix M100, uh, Epson Moverio, what have you. Um, and most important, really, is that all of this data that you're trying to deliver and convey to the user exists within the, the enterprise resource planning systems that, that companies have spent, in some cases, decades and then billions of dollars uh, building out. So, and this could be really boring information like PDFs. Um, and, but PDFs, when printed onto paper or displayed on a tablet or what have you, is the gold standard for how a lot of the, the workforce is consuming data today. Um, and what that means is that the, your initial inter integration, if you go down the, the path of choosing this type of a use case, the, the initial integration burden, the initial training burden, because you don't have to prepare necessarily new data in order for an enterprise to experiment with this, this technology to calculate your IRR. A lot of that is, uh, a lot of that barrier is lessened. And then within the ERP player space, of course, um, there is a, a significant ecosystem of developers, uh, your, your large four systems integrators, that are able to, to figure out hooks into the legacy systems. So, you know, from our perspective and based on our experience, by enabling some bi-directional data flow between the ERP systems to where the work is being done and delivering data to the people that are actually doing the work has been by far the most successful story that we have had in time to production. Very standard slide that we use um, internally when we're talking to customers on what makes a good starting project. These are some of the different criteria that, that's out there. And I hate that I'm bound to this mic. You're, you're looking at different network architectures. A lot of the things that I've already talked about, um, communication, so a lot of that ties into, of course, battery life and, um, and how, you know, you, you want to be able to run eight to 10 hours on a, on a work shift, whatever that data consumption model ends up being. Big difference between expert and novice uh, workforce is another key factor in a sense that you can start enabling some, some expert help, uh, whether or not that's through some, some telemedicine type of systems or just by sheer kind of text messaging heads up. And smart safety glasses is another really strong case. Thanks, people. Smart safety glasses is a huge market, uh, manufacturing, logistics, where areas where there's uh, typically eye protection that's required, we have seen uh, a tremendous amount of take up because people are not, they're, they're not opposed to putting something in front of their eyes and by, you know, all, a lot of this is within the spirit of working within the, the existing workflow and how people are doing work today and then gradually introducing this technology so that you're not really trying to um, cause significant ripple effects because as, as it goes with any new piece of technology, um, getting user buy and user adoption is everything. 
And then lastly, of course, um, ac you know, access to your familiar legacy systems interface. So these would be your SAPs, your Oracles, and your IBMs, and your Microsoft uh, data sources that are, that are critically important. This is how we do it. Um, we try and do this by keeping, if you think about the, the hands-on workforce and the Skylight application and peripherals, um, we try and keep that as constant as possible. And the only customization that us and our developers will do is what's highlighted in orange, which is uh, a piece of code that we call an add-in that's, um, that's connected to the, the core server framework, which is self-deployed, is deployed within the IT infrastructure. And then that in turn provides connectivity to your variety of different uh, ERP systems so that you can, you can exchange that um, data to and from ERP systems and also to the hands-on workforce in a bi-directional fashion. Uh, and then that, of course, can serve as a gateway to the Internet of Things. What is not shown here is that in order for anyone, any enterprise to be able to get to this kind of the, the architecture means that you have to do a lot of the, the enterprise MDM and, and a lot of the enterprise IT integration and adoption. There's a significant amount of work that has to be done underneath that. But once you do that legwork and you have a, a, a deployed repeatable software model that exists within your infrastructure, then you can scale, right? It doesn't have to be a single use case. It doesn't have to be um, a single application against a single device. Now, by defining essentially this workflow and this process, you can, you can take it all the way through so that you're, you know, within a given enterprise, you might have hundreds of use cases uh, spending, spanning tens of thousands of users. And ultimately, as a part of the area, that's what we're trying to get to amongst all, amongst the customers, providers, and things like that. And within the ecosystem, what we're trying to do is to have a call to action for people that are, that are in the space today uh, in a, in a non-AR or a non-wearable capacity, um, or someone who is interested in joining into the space, or, of course, customers and users to come in and join us. Thank you.